Hello and welcome to a new video about Internet of Things. To a new video about Thingworks. This time we are using the Thingworks platform to make our first thing. And everything which is necessary to store data and to retrieve data from a thing. This is our goal now. Set up everything which is necessary to have a thing server. Thing thing server. Yeah? Where we can store data in the internet and retrieve the server which we need to network our devices. So uh, we will see it's a little bit more complicated than in MQTT. However, we already oh, already we also get more from Thingworks. Thingworks is simply bigger. Bigger than MQTT, so it's a little bit more complicated to set it up. This is our Thingworks instance. Yeah? The first thing we have to do is we have to add a project. Adding something new is always with this plus button. Plus button is always a good choice to add something. Plus and we will use a project. Now we're getting a dialogue for a new project. Yeah? If you have your own Thingworks instance, you can do whatever you like. In school, yeah, we have to stick to some naming conventions yeah? and the naming conventions are we have to use our school number that's our school number yeah? then we have the, the class name then we'll use our name then we can think of a project name I will call it class because I want to do a thing for a drinking class. Yeah? I want to have a property inside there about the temperature, I want to have the property inside there about the fill level, about the content class. Yeah? This is why I call it class. Yeah? And this is what we are going to use on every item we have to use that, to make this work. Like I said, the first thing is the project, PR. This is the suffix for the project. A thing will then have another suffix and so on. We'll see what we will use there. Uh, well, actually, that's all we have to enter. A name, uh, maybe a description. Uh, a project for a drinking glass. name something. Yeah. That's it. Save. Back. Then there is the project. Okay. We have now a project with a certain name. This is good. Now, what else? A project is simply a husk, a, a, a hull, yeah? something which holds together all the other parts. Yeah? So all the other parts will now be tied to the project. And one important other part is the so-called application key. The application key is controlling the security. Who is able to connect to a thing, who is able or who is allowed to collect data and so on. This can be controlled by so-called application keys. So we have to add a new application key. This can be done again with plus. And now we have to simply select application key. Here, here it is. The bottom yeah? and we'll use the same name and then AK for application key. Okay? PR was the project itself, AK is the application key. And we have to bind this application key to a certain project. And here we have to select. And now already, I mean right now there is not a lot of project at this server. Yeah? Book. We will use our project. If you not stick to the naming convention, then it might happen that your project is, or all the other things might get be deleted. Yeah? As it's not starting with the school number, you already yeah? risk it, let's call it. Yeah? So this is the application key. And now we have to select the user for which the application key is, is demanded. Yeah? It's, it's, it's the one who is representing this and that user. So we are selecting a user and we will use administrator. 
it immediately warns us, hey, this is really not good practice to have an application key representing the administrator. Yeah? Because, you know, if you identify yourself with that application key, you identify yourself as administrator and can do almost everything at this server. Mm. However, we will do this because adding users and so on, this is a whole new part. We are not going to deal this in ThingWorks. Yeah? We'll try to keep it to a level we can still manage in the time available. So, application key, name, tied to a project, selected a user, and now also important, select an expiration date. So the application, date, the application key is not valid all the time, we have to select how long it stays valid. And then uh, simply say select until the end of, of June, uh, 12 a.m. I think we should be done. Uh, there. If the expiration date is set too soon and the application key is already expired, then you might have issues writing or reading from the from the thing. Yeah? This is often a this is often causing, why is it no longer happening? Why is it no longer working? I've done nothing. Yes, you have done nothing and it's expired simply. You have to think about this. Okay. Save it. Back. Yeah. We have a project, we have an associated application key and we need a so-called thing where we can store our data to. Yeah. So I will add a new thing, a new thing called thing. Yeah. Thing. Huh? Name required and I will call it th for thing. Okay. Description drinking glass. Huh? Project, of course, our project. Huh? Things templates. Huh? We will use generic thing. We don't, you can, if you have, you, if you use. Uh, always the same thing or always the same pattern of things you can you can use a thing template yeah? then there will be already added some standard uh, properties and so on we will use a generic thing this is without anything yeah? so it's a generic thing yeah? well Basically, that's already it for the thing. Yeah, we'll save the thing now to have nothing to lose. Yeah, yeah. We have a thing, and inside the thing, we can have properties. Yeah, we can switch to the properties here properties and alerts. Okay, currently, there's no we have a thing with no property. Yeah? Now we add a property, the name is required, and I will call it. Temp, class temp, huh? class temperature. Huh? Call it description, class temperature, class temperature. And here we have to select uh, type, huh? and this is of course a number. Huh? What are a number? Units, I can degree Celsius, select degree Celsius. Is this not working? Degree? Oh, so it's working. Degree Celsius, minimum value. You know, this has not really influence. Yeah? However, we can enter here some values yeah? and then we can trigger alarms or something like this also from ThingWorks. This is something which is not covered by MQDT, right? So there is a minimum and a maximum value. So I expect that the Drinking temperature is above zero degree, and they expected the drinking temperature to be below 50 degree. Yeah. Maybe it's a T, maybe it's T, so it's 100. Yeah. Otherwise, it would just be vaporized. <laughs> so, liquid, there is a liquid. Yeah. We want to have it persistent and we want to have it locked also okay persistent means even if there is no new information it will be kept the last known information and locked means 
uh, we can read it in a data storage. Uh, okay, check. Class time, it is here. Okay, save. Currently it has value zero. Uh, so now, now we have one a thing. Uh, we have we have a project. Under this project we have a thing with one property, the temperature, yeah? and we have an application key. Yeah? Actually that's everything we need to do the next step to access this, yeah? to store data in there. You could use the thing to add more properties, a property for uh, level, liquid level and the property maybe for liquid content, how many liters are inside there or milliliters or whatever. Yeah. Choose appropriate scales and levels and, 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 and units and so on, yeah. and minimum and maximum values and also a pro appropriate name. Yeah. That's it. I mean, this is everything you need to, to store data in a thing. So. How this is working to really store data and retrieve data from the thing, we have a look next time. Yeah, in next video, we, it's going by HTTP request, what an HTTP request is and how they need to look like to access those things. Yeah, we will cover next time, yeah, next video. For this video, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.